All right. Uh, I was uh, working on a project today for my brother's 1968 half cab Bronco. I've got the tailgate here in the background behind me. And uh, as I was thinking more about creating these art videos for Art Attack, uh, I think of a lot of questions that other artists come up with uh, and hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on uh, some of the techniques and the things that I use. So this evening uh, I am out here in my second workspace which I'll give you a little tour of here in just a sec. Uh, this is actually my exterior garage uh, workspace. Uh, you can see a little bit of it there in the background. I got a fridge and uh, all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I, I want to discuss prepping some of the surfaces for this particular project and then also address a bunch of the questions that uh, people often have for me regarding reference material and using photographs, which almost all pro artists do. And I really just want to dispel some of the myths uh, that, and misconceptions that uh, people have sometimes of the, the art that we create and hopefully add a little bit of information for uh, the emerging artists that are out there who uh, uh, you know, want a glimpse behind uh, creating some of these projects and things. So uh, that's I just, uh, just a quick introduction there. I'm gonna turn it around to the actual art that I'm working on. And uh, I'm just gonna keep talking about the reference in the project and what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just going to keep it quick. This is only going to be just a, a couple, two, three minute, maybe five minute video. All right, so I'm going to switch around. Okay, uh, so you guys can kind of see a little bit. Uh, I got to redo my space out here, but uh, I got my uh, Charlie Bronson there in the background and the TV and a fridge and all that. But here's what we're working on. We are working on a tailgate. This is actually going to be for my brother's uh, 68 half cab Bronco. Old Bronco, kind of like uh, mine that you see sitting over here uh, that's a 1966 uh, and his is the half cab version uh, but anyway that one's got an auto mural on it too but this is a present for him and so what I'm doing is I created a mock-up for him I'm going to show you the mock-up here so this is using Photoshop I've got the this is actually gonna this truck's gonna go to his son as his first vehicle and his son's a big sports fan he loves the Denver Broncos so my suggestion was the use the Denver Bronco logo head, but rather than putting a sports mural in the middle of it, actually do um, these murals uh, of running horses with uh, the Colorado Rockies in the background. And then down here at the bottom of their, uh, their hose and everything, it's gonna be you know crashing through snow and it's gonna be spilling up. It's gonna be really cool. And in the mock-up, you can kind of see, I've gone with the, in the, the mock-up, this is just a, a photo version creating photo reference for myself is to, uh, I'm gonna paint the whole thing more in the body color of the truck. And you can see, cause this is a tailgate. And so this is the body color of it. It's already been sanded with 1000 grit sandpaper. I've measured everything off. And then you can see I've got a couple of paper stencils taped around and I'm using little magnets. You can see these little guys down here. This is just a little magnet. You can see it stays on there. This is a great way to create a loose paper mask on the the, um, the truck without any cutting. I think it's real amateurish to, um, I, I try never, ever, ever to cut on metal. So if you need to mask a shape off or anything like that, use this kind of uh, thin paper. This is just like butcher paper. Now, because I have a big printer, I can print out these kind of references for myself as a one-to-one -one size. Uh, now take a look at the drawing. Now I've already got four or five hours uh, in these drawings uh, on both sides. So um, the technique that I'm going to show you is to create a rub down. Now a rub down technique is, has been around since the Renaissance. It's really that old. So. What you do is you take your photo reference. This could be a sketch, just like My Lady Death or something like that. And you can either, on the back side of it, either cover this whole thing with um, pencil, with some really nice, and you, you would have to cover the whole thing like that. Or just pick up some of this. This is carbon paper. And carbon paper, uh, I should be able, if this is facing the right direction, I should be able to take my fingernail 
and just kind of do a scratch like that. And if it's facing the right way, look at that. I've got a nice line here where my fingernail actually just put that line in. So this is a great fast way to save yourself time. On projects like this, on most of my automotive projects, I'm not getting paid by the hour. I'm bidding it based on the project, the caliber of what I'm delivering and how it's gonna look at the end. So doing a rub down of just the outline of the horses and things like that, little details I want, it puts in the, uh, the details and allows it to, uh, for me to speed up my time. Now, don't let anyone ever tell you that using a photographic reference is bad. It's a bunch of crap. If you see, like take a look at, uh, you know, Joe Jusco's painting here, any of the other art that's around here, uh, Nagel's up there, Elvgren, Petty, all these guys, Drew Struzan, Ansel, great painters, all use photographic reference. It's what we do to get great anatomy and things like that and learn how to do it. So uh, if you don't think that Norman Rockwell and all these others uh, didn't use photos, then you're mistaken. And basically, if they had photos in the Renaissance, they probably would have used them too. Um, because this stuff is really hard to do otherwise. So if you're a young emerging artist, by all means, until you learn anatomy and you can draw this kind of stuff on your own freehand, as everyone loves to say, freehand, then, you know, this is just a time saver. Can I have drawn this uh, myself just looking at some reference of running horses? Absolutely. It would have taken me a couple of more hours, but why am I going to waste my time? All I care about is the finished product looking good. So I'm gonna do whatever I can to make it go fast, make it look great, and make the best use of my time. So again, uh, that's when it comes down to uh, using these kind of paper templates, using uh, photographic reference. I'll always keep this handy. I can look back so I know what the anatomy of the horse is doing. I'm keeping the whole idea of the illustration and uh, I'm just going to adjust real quickly the term freehand. There's all these airbrush artists out there and they love to brag and go, Oh my God, I did this freehand. You know what? There's no such thing as freehand. It's all freaking freehand. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Unless your freaking hand is chained to the wall, then your hands are free. So don't be a jackass and, and you're not going to probably learn much from those doofuses anyway, because they're all about their ego and so all airbrush, all drawing, unless you're doing something weird. I don't know what the alternative is to freehand, but it doesn't matter whether I'm using a hand shield or, you know, a French curve spraying against anything to make this the best possible, then uh, that's why I kind of wanted to address this evening the, the kind of thing about the freehand showing how, especially on a large mural, that you can get this achieved. Now I'm going to do, we're just going to do, give you a real quick little tour over here. Sorry about this. I got a duck underneath the uh, lift here. So we're coming over to my truck and here's the mural that's on the hood. This is a finished mural and I painted this live. That's with automotive paints and uh, this is on my own truck. And uh, was there a paper stencil and was that done uh, with all the exact same methods? Absolutely hand painting, freehand airbrush, all that kind of stuff. And this is the finished product. And I painted this entire thing live at a car show here in Denver. So uh, I don't care about showing my, uh, uh, my techniques. I want you guys to learn. It's not about uh, my ego or anything. And, and I'll be honest, sometimes artists don't like to show their techniques because they think you're gonna actually somehow suddenly, I don't know, get better than they are, or it's a big myth, or it's a big secret. Guess what, it's not a secret. We're all learning to do the exact same stuff that everybody else has been doing. We're just trying to do it in our own way. So if you wanna do your own automotive projects, look for your own style. Uh, um, Jeff says, I honestly freehand, as in straight drawing with my airbrush sometimes. Whole pieces, I use lots of other shields and stuff too. Well, Jeff, that's my point. All airbrush is freehand. There, there's no other way. You, your hand is free, and I don't care if somebody's masking something off with frisket or a hand shield or whatever. You're still spraying, you're, you're using your airbrush freehand. So that's the reason why I kind of wanted to spell that myth. It, it's all freehand. So 
all that matters in the end is how good the art looks when it's done. And uh, I might take some progress pictures uh, throughout this project as well. Uh, Ryan said he learned a few things on, on, you know, setting up or doing some projects. So I love paper masks. I love these little magnets that I use here. Only time you can't use them is if there's a bunch of Bondo or if you're working on a, a plastic, uh, like my VMAX that's over there that's all torn apart at the moment. It has plastic fairing pieces. You can't use the magnets on them. So never cut on the steel. That's one of my, um, uh, my best suggestions. Hopefully that helps. Um, so sorry this video ran a little bit longer uh, that's about it I'm gonna actually get to work here so uh, I'll probably just post this video in the entirety and then uh, save it so you guys can go back to it so thanks for joining thanks for commenting and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon thanks bye